and welcome everybody to uh, this Zotero workshop. Let me get my screen organized a little bit, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Again, I'll just repeat, uh, please feel free to type questions in chat at any time that you would like. I'm going to try to keep an eye on the chat. It's a little tricky when I'm doing uh, so many windows at one time, but I will try and keep an eye on the chat as well. Uh, if you would like to unmute yourself to ask a question, you're also welcome to do that. We have a small group, so I don't think that'll be very disruptive. Um, I have the room set to mute everybody automatically when you enter, but if you have a microphone and want to unmute yourself, that's fine. So, uh, welcome again. We're going to be talking about Zotero, as I hope you know. Uh, if that's what you're expecting, then you're in the right place. My name's Jason Puckett. I am, uh, among other hats that I wear at the library, I'm, uh, I'm our Atlanta campus uh, Zotero instructor. I see we've got Shiji with us, who's our uh, perimeter campus Zotero instructor as well. Shiji, chime in if I forget anything important. And... Um, uh, let's get started. So if you have not used Zotero before, we're starting today uh, with no, uh, thank you Shiji, we're, we're starting today with no assumption that you have any previous experience with Zotero. Um, if you have used EndNote or RefWorks, those are similar programs. There are other uh, applications out there that do similar things. We call these reference managers or citation managers, and they're basically a way for us to save citations as we're doing research uh, and organize them, gives you sort of your own little personal database of sources to, uh, to search and annotate and so on. Um, and turn those into bibliographies. Um, if you have not used a program like this before, I think you're really going to like it. Uh, it is a huge time saver and labor saver um, and has, has saved my butt on multiple occasions as I've been doing writing projects. So uh, let's dive in. What I like to do at the start of a session like this, what I used to do when I was teaching Zotero is I would go through, here's how to install, here's how to save, here's how to site here's how to turn it into a bibliography and when I would click that bibliography button everybody would be really impressed because it, it, it will um, create a bibliography just with one click and then people would go okay wait, wait wait back up and show me how you did that again so what I like to do now is I start with like a one minute demo I'm gonna do a search I'm going to turn it into a bibliography just so you see what this application can do for you. Don't worry about the how yet. I'm going to just give you a, a quick one minute demo and then we'll, we'll get into the how it works. I'll back up from scratch. So I'm going to do a search here. I'm in a library database just like normal. Um, let me see. What am I interested in researching today? Um, let's say... Um, cults and brainwashing just for fun nice light topic and uh, I'm gonna click the Zotero button again don't worry about how this works yet I'm gonna show you all this but let's say I've got four or five sources that I want to save click OK and then at the top right of my screen where my mouse is moving up here you can see it's saving these sources and where it has saved to is my Zotero library in my Zotero application right here. So uh, I just clicked those buttons. Uh, it saves these sources. I'm going to right click, create bibliography, copy, and paste into a bibliography. So uh, what was that, a minute or so maybe at most, and I was talking through that. Really, really easy to just save and cite sources. I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you how to install it, how to set it up, how to um, save sources, organize your library, and create bibliographies. So that's what we'll be doing between now and 11 o'clock. Um, just want to show you how this, or uh, what this can do. And uh, then we're going to back up and, uh, and show you the how of it. So what is this that we're talking about? Zotero is an application for your computer. Uh, it's got uh, versions for Mac and Windows. It works with um, 
Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, so it works with uh, the any computer that you're using and probably any browser that you're using. It is free software. You do not need a GSU login. You do not need a license code, anything like that. You go to this site, Zotero.org, and there's a download button, and I will paste this into chat. I am not expecting you to follow along with me in real time, by the way. This is just for your later reference, and I'll give you some uh, reference materials to take with you that have instructions for doing all this. So uh, when I install Zotero, I go to the website here. There are two parts to this program that I'll need to install. I'm on a Windows machine. It recognizes that I'm on a Windows computer. You can see there is a Mac version and a Linux version if you use other operating systems. I would download it and run the setup program just like I would anything that I'm installing on my computer. I'm not really going to do that because I've got it installed already. And then I would install what we call a connector. And uh, I will actually do this just to show you this part. What this connector is, I'm going to remove it and reinstall it. What this connector is, is it lets me do searches in my browser and save sources from my browser into the Zotero program. We're going to be using this a lot. I'll talk about how this works. But just to make sure you know, you need to install these two parts. So. I'm in Chrome. This is going to be similar if I'm on Firefox or Safari or another browser. I would just click Add to Chrome, Add Extension. It gives me a little pop-up telling me that it has been added. And let me just pin it here so it's more visible. So this is the Zotero Save button. Uh, you'll see it sometimes called the capture icon, but basically this is how you'll save sources. We'll be looking at that a lot, so uh, just hold that thought for a few minutes. Once I've got it installed and set up, this is what my Zotero, we call this my Zotero library. You can see this is my actual library that I use for real life projects. I've got loads of uh, collections of sources over here, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, but uh, there are three parts to this screen. Over here on the left is uh, my library. This is everything that I've saved previously, and I've organized this into collections, which are just lists of sources. If I select anything over on the left, if I select my library, it shows me everything that I've ever saved. Uh, if I've got a particular collection selected, I'll show you how to create those. Um, then it uh, it's going to show me everything that's in that collection. And then in the middle column here, if I select a single item, then it shows me the details over here on the right. So we're going to save some sources in just a second, and you'll see how this works. What I would do, let me go to a new search here. Uh, I am in... A, uh, a library database right now. I just chose the EBSCO database academic search complete. This will work the same way with JSTOR, with Google Scholar, with the library's catalog, with just about any source that you're searching, right? any database, any catalog, any archive, whatever, just about anything where you're doing a library source, this is going to work the same way. I chose academic search complete just because we're we're often used to using EBSCO databases here. And I'm going to just do a search and then show you how to save a source to your library. So let's do, um, I don't know. I don't know why I'm on cults today, but let's say I'm on the history of cults. And I want to save this item to my Zotero library. So right now it's a little Z icon. If I click this, it's going to give me just a pop-up confirming that it's installed. What's going to happen with this little Zotero button? You see when I mouse over it, it says save to Zotero, indicating what that button does. This is going to change this little button here that I'm, my mouse is over at the top right of my screen. This will change appearance depending on what kind of source that I'm looking at. Um, this is a citation for an article. And so Zotero can recognize that I've got a, an article citation loaded into my web browser. And the button uh, will turn into this little, it's supposed to be a little white page that looks like a, an article page. 
all I do is just click the button and this is going to happen quickly so I'll try and talk through it as it happens here. Shows me that it's saving it to my Zotero library. Uh, it shows me the title and it shows me also that it's capturing the full text PDF which is handy. If I toggle over to my Zotero library here's what I just saved. It's this article by Irani. You can see it's by Ayesha Irani here and so it saved the title. It knows that it's a journal article. It saved the title. It saved the author name. It saves the abstract and basically all of the information that I would need for my bibliography. It's saving for me automatically. Um, it saves the URL where I got it, the journal, the volume issue pages, date, etc. So it's going to save that for every source that I save. So again, all I have to do is just do a search as I normally would, click the Zotero button, save to my library. It will try if it can. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it'll try to get a PDF along with it. I noticed this one did not give me the little saving PDF message as well. And you can see in this column, this, this is showing me where I've got a PDF saved and where I don't. I don't know if it's because this is an older article. For whatever reason, we just we don't have access to a PDF of it in the library's database. So sometimes it will save PDFs if it can, sometimes it won't. But um, it saves all of the same information, author title, publication, etc. I can save multiple items at the same time. Let me go back one. Now you notice now I'm on a page that's got multiple citations on it. I've got 20 citations on this page and the button up here has changed from a, a little page item a page icon to a folder icon indicating that there are multiple items on this page, multiple references on this page. If I click the button, it shows me everything that's on that page. And I can check off the ones that I want. There's a select all and a deselect all. If I want to just save everything on the page, I'm going to just save a handful of them here. I'm just picking four or five at random. And I'll click OK. And it's going to save each of these. And again, it will try to save the PDFs. Looks like it did it for three out of the four. And here we go. They're all saved to my, uh, my Zotero library here. That is really all there is to saving sources. Almost all the time, um, all you have to do is just either select the individual source that you want to save and then click the button or you can be on that page of results but it's the same button either way. What I've done so far is saving uh, articles, journal articles. This will work with book citations. It can save book citations from Amazon, from WorldCat, from library databases and so on. So it's going to work the same no matter what kind of source I'm saving. Uh, if I notice that there's anything wrong in here, uh, if there's a mistake in the uh, in the title or like this is in all caps, I might want to go in and fix that. Um, or if there's um, punctuation problems, anything like that, I can go in and edit anything just by clicking on it and typing over it. Like for example, this title is in all caps. This is a neat trick. I can just right click and choose title case, which will give me first letter capitals or sentence case, which will um, it will just uh, type the excuse me. It will just capitalize the uh, the first letter of the, the title. And I see. Sorry, let me bring up the chat. I saw we got a question come in. If you have results in your folder in EBSCO, can you add those to the Zotero library? Yeah, so if you've got, like if I save three or four items, here's what we're talking about here. If I save three or four items to my EBSCO folder up here, this should work. Yeah, um, I can just save these to my Zotero library.
same way just click the folder button here up here at the top or the, the Zotero button and select all and it should save those yeah it looks like that's working just fine yeah good question okay um yeah so that's that's about all there is to saving sources saving sources is really easy all you do is just do your search as normal and then just click that Zotero button. You can see I've got some duplicates here. I could I could merge these duplicates if I wanted by selecting them. Right click and there's a merge choice. The other thing I can do is if I know I've got a duplicate, I can just delete and actually if I right click there's also a move to trash here. I can either delete it from this collection or I can move it to the trash. I'm going to just remove it all together. Um, I see here it looks like they got the O'Brien name wrong here. I would probably want to go in and fix that. I'm not going to bother with it right now, but that if I were doing a real bibliography, I would fix that. So I've mentioned these collections over here, and you can see I've got a bunch of them because this is my actual Zotero library, and these are like previous presentations I've done or topics that I've researched or that sort of thing. So I've got lots of these collections. And a collection is just a list of sources. Uh, I can create as many of these as I want for different topics or different, you know, assignments or whatever. There's a button up here that says new collection. And I can just give it a name. Call it collection two. And this is just a list of sources. This is like a playlist in my uh, music app. Um, I can add as many sources as I want by either dragging them on there, drag, just dragging it onto the folder. Or as you may have noticed if you were looking very, very carefully, as I was saving sources before, I have this demo collection created just so I can delete it when we're done with class today. Um, it was uh, when I selected the demo collection before we started, anything that I save goes into that because I have it selected. And that'll make it easier, easy for me after today's workshop to just delete that so that it's not cluttering up my real library. So you can create as many of these collections as you want. It's up to you how you use them. If you want to you know, create one for every class you're taking, one for every assignment you're working on, whatever you want. Yeah, so you can create as many of those as you want. Are there other questions? Let me just pause for breath and a sip of coffee. Are there other questions so far about anything that I've shown you? Next, we're going to be uh, creating bibliographies, I think. One question that I often get that I'm just remembering is um, somebody will say, ask me a lot of the time, I've got like a folder with a bunch of PDFs. Um, can I save those into Zotero? And the answer is probably yes. Uh, I've got this folder here with some um, PDFs that I've previously saved. And this is a really neat trick. I can just, this is just a folder on my hard drive. If I drag it into my Zotero library, it's going to happen really fast, but it just read that PDF and turned it into a formatted source. That doesn't work 100% of the time. But uh, yeah, this is a great trick. Um, it doesn't work 100% of the time, but a lot of the time it will just be able to read a PDF, watch here, turn it into a fully formatted citation. It's checking Google Scholar, it's checking some other sources, and um, it's reading the contents of the PDF and turning it into a fully formatted source. So that's a really handy trick if you've got PDFs previously saved. Okay, um, jump in with more questions as we go. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this uh, list of sources that I've got and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that we can turn this into a bibliography. Uh, the, the simplest way, the fastest way is just to select sources and then I can just right click and choose create bibliography. So I'm going to show you that first because that's easier and faster. And then I'll show you a, another way to do it that's got maybe a, a few more features. So let's say that I want to take this whole list of sources and turn it into a bibliography. Um, I'm going to just select all, control A on a Windows PC, I think it's command A on a Mac, and I'm going to uh, just right click. Oops. 
select all, right click, there we go, and choose create bibliography. And uh, this is just on my right click pop up menu. It's going to give me this list of possible styles. Now there are 15 ish styles that come with Zotero. I'll show you where to get more styles. Um, I've added a couple of other styles just as I was playing with Zotero, but it, this uh, is going to come with APA, Chicago, you can see some different versions of Chicago here, MLA, and some major journals like Nature and a couple of other ones here. But it'll come with Chicago, APA, MLA, which is probably what most of us are using most of the time. I'll just do, um, I don't know, I'll do APA. I can, if I want to, I can save this as a file or print it. What I usually do is just copy it to the clipboard and then open up a Word document and just paste it in. So all I did, I'll show you that again real quick. Let me zoom this so you can maybe read my screen a little bigger. I'll show you that again. All I did was select the sources that I want. I can do one source, I can do a bunch of sources, or I can do all of these sources. Right click, create bibliography, choose the style. Let's do Chicago, copy, and then open a Word file. And I'm going to hit paste. Boom, there we go. Really, really easy. Um, just copy and paste. I can do that in any style that I want. And all it does is it's just pasting it as text into Word. And I can edit this. I can do anything else that I need to. Really easy. There are uh, more options for how to create bibliographies that uh, I think maybe once you get into actually writing papers may actually be more useful to you and a little more full featured here. So I'm going to show you that next. Um, do jump in with questions. Stop me with questions. I'm, I'm seeing pop ups on the screen as questions come in. So uh, chat should work for questions. Um, so when I install Zotero to my computer, it adds to my Word the Zotero toolbar. So I'm in Word now, but it has created this Zotero toolbar. Most of the time, all I need are two buttons on this toolbar, add citation, add bibliography. That's what you will need 99% of the time. I'll, I'll talk you through the other buttons here real quick. Uh, Santana's asking, they're not getting the little Zotero button in your escort page. Maybe that's a typo. And I'm not sure which Zotero button. Yeah, it's it's my EBSCO host in, uh, in, in my library. I don't see the uh, little okay. button that you have sh uh, shown me. Did I do something wrong? Okay. Um, yeah. So I think what we're talking about is when you're saving sources, you're not seeing the, the yeah. save button yeah. in your uh, browser. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're in Chrome, what browser are you using? It's a Safari. Safari. Okay. It's going to look a little bit different and I don't have Safari on this computer. A couple of things may be going on. One is in Chrome, and I know there's something similar in Safari, in Chrome you can set these extensions to appear or to show or hide by, by putting a little pin next to them. I don't know exactly how to do that in Safari, um, but you can email me afterwards and we'll, we'll figure it out sure. if that doesn't do it. Thank the you. other thing is um, Zotero.org slash download. The other thing is when you install it, you'll need to download the application and install the connector, and that's two separate steps. So sometimes that gets left out. So my guess is it's one of those two things. If it's not obvious to you right away where the where the problem is coming in, you can drop me an email after the workshop and we'll we'll work through. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Take a look at that when we're uh, when we're done. Yep. That is that is a common problem. The other thing that may happen similar to that is sometimes in Word you won't see this Zotero toolbar. Usually, 
what that means is um, you'll need to have Word closed when you install Zotero in order for this to appear, and I can help you with that as well. I'll show you a couple of tricks for that towards the end. It looks like we'll probably have plenty of time. So uh, let's um, let me show you how to uh, cite some sources as you're writing your document. Uh, yeah, Shiji comments that getting Zotero fully configured on your computer is the hardest part. When I'm doing this as a, an in-person workshop, there's always a moment where I, it, everything just sort of stops cold and I go around and look at everybody's computers and go, oh, you didn't do this part. Okay, so let's get that set up. So yeah, once you've got that set up though, it's very easy. Yeah, and we can probably fix it over email. Okay, so uh, let's say that I have now saved my sources and I'm writing a paper. So this is my paper that I'm writing. Oop can't talk and type at the same time. And let's say that I've just um, mentioned something from one of my sources that I want to cite. This is really easy. There is a button here that says add citation. It's also the edit citation, but more to the point, this is how you'll add a citation. So I'll just click this button. First time I do this in a new document, it's going to show me this list of sources. Um, it remembers the last one that I used was Chicago. Uh, I don't know, let's do APA. Almost never have to touch any anything down here below the list of styles. Basically, what you'll need to do is just select the style and click OK. It gives me this little red search bar, and what this is searching is all of the sources that I have previously saved. So I know I'm saving some sources on cults. I can type in an author name, I can type in a word from the title, I can type in a keyword. Usually when I'm doing this for real, I'm, I'm probably typing in uh, an author name, but you can do a word from the title or a keyword, anything like that. And let's say I want to cite this one by Irani. Just press enter. And I'll do that a couple of more times so you can see exactly what I did. Um, all I did was, this is, oops. Sorry, fix that. There we go. This is something I want to cite. All I do is click Add Citation. It'll pop up the red search bar. I can type in an author name or a title term. Select the one that I want to uh, cite. It'll, this is, these are all the matching sources from my library, anything that I've saved previously. And I'll just select the one that I want to cite and press enter and it adds it to my document. Once I've got one or more sources in my document, I can click the add bibliography button. So I just put the cursor at the bottom of my document where I want the bibliography to appear and I'll just click add bibliography and it's going to start creating the bibliography with everything that I've previously saved. So from now on anything or excuse me everything that I've previously cited everything that I've previously cited in this paper will appear in the bibliography. So anything else that I cite anything else that I cite will now appear in the bibliography as well. So let me click add citation and let's do this one. Press enter and you can see that it's keeping them alphabetical. Ambasciano was the third one that I cited but it's first in my bibliography because it's first alphabetically and I'm using APA style which wants an alphabetical bibliography. If I were using a style that wanted the bibliography in citation order, it can handle that as well. So um, I can change styles very easily. A few things that I get questions about usually at this point is uh, if I want to change styles in a document, if I mistakenly put this in APA style and I want it in Chicago style, there's this document preferences button here. And uh, I wish they called this button change styles since that's what you use it for most of the time. But uh, document preferences will bring up that style list again. And let's say I want to do Chicago style. And I've got a few different versions of Chicago style available. I'll show you what these look like. But I'm going to just change this to Chicago author date style. 
and you can see I can't tell everything that it did because it happened too fast but it changed the uh, the in-text citations I think it gets rid of the comma there and it changed the spacing in the bibliography and changed some of the formatting of the bibliography there's also a footnote style it'll handle footnotes just fine you can see that it changed the in-text citations to footnotes so it'll handle just about any style that you want. Um, I'm going to change this back. Oh, one thing I want to point out, uh, when I change style from an in-text style to a footnoted style, I need to go in and fix some punctuation here. I think that would be correct rather than this. So I may need to go in and change some space, spacing, change some, some punctuation, things like that. Couple of things that uh, that I want to pay attention to here. One thing is, in my bibliography, there's an extra space in here. This comes up a lot in library catalogs. Sometimes we will put an extra space in um, in the title if there's a subtitle. Um, so I would want to fix that. Um, I remember some of the sources that I say previously there. It looked like there were some mistakes in the author name. So I would want to go in and fix that sort of thing. What I want to do instead of fixing it here in the document, like I could just delete the space here, but then anytime I add a new source, it's going to pull this information out of my Zotero library again. So what I mean by that is watch here after the word patrons. Anytime I add a new source, it'll refresh the citations automatically and it'll put that space back. So what I would want to do is go into my Zotero library and find Bagnall. Oh, let me search my whole library, not just that collection. And I would want to fix that right here in the title and just delete that space there. And then it's fixed forever. Anytime I cite this anymore, it's going to be fixed there. So if I refresh the document again, it disappears. Very small nitpicky stuff, but bibliographies are all about very small nitpicky stuff. Um, other questions for me so far? I've got another thing I want to show you, but uh, happy to take more questions at this point. Either chat or voice is fine. One thing I do want to show you is adding page numbers. This is something that comes up a lot. Um, for example, let's say I'm citing uh, a particular page number and this, uh, this source by Ambasciano, um, and I want to make sure and put the page number in there. So I can, I can either do this when I first add the source or I can go back and add it later. It's the same button and the same procedure. I'm going to just select this citation and click the add button is also the edit button. But either way, it brings up the red search bar. All I do is just inside the red bar, click the author name, and the, it brings up more options here. And it's got a, uh, a place where I can add a page number. So I'm going to pretend that I was citing something on page 99. Just click that citation. It'll give me this more options. And I can just type in a page number here. And then I'll just press Enter. Press enter and it updates it to add the citation, to, excuse me, add the page number to my citation. Does that make sense? Are there questions about that? If, the, if there's silence, then I'll assume that that made sense. Another question I get a lot of the time that I want to make sure and show you. Okay, thanks, Shiji. Uh, another question I want to show you or uh, that I get a lot is uh, about omitting the, the author name, uh, as in if I want to say, um, Becknell says something about this. And I want to cite this Becknell and Smallwood source again, but I don't want to put the author name in because I've mentioned the author name in the sentence. And I can just select the source that I want. Again, I'm going to just click on the citation before I press Enter. And let's say this is a specific page number, and I've mentioned the author's name in the text, so I want to omit the author's name from the citation, and then I'll just press Enter 
enter and it just gives me the year instead of name and then year and then page number. Those are the main things that I want to make sure you know about citing as you go. Um, again, if you open Word, once you, you finish here in the workshop today, if you open Word and you don't see this Zotero toolbar, probably what you need to do is close Word and you can either reinstall Zotero or there's a button you can click in Zotero that will add the toolbar. I'll show you that in a, a second. So that's saving sources. Most of what you need to do as far as organizing sources, I think we've covered. Um, and the last things that I want to show you with our time, and then we can take any other questions or discussion you want. Last thing I want to show you is uh, some of the online features, synchronizing your library to cloud storage, and that will also let you share libraries. This is really, really useful to do. So on the Zotero website, you can sign up for free cloud storage. Um, if I log out, uh, on the Zotero website, there is a register link or a login link. They'll take you to basically the same page. I can either register for an account or log in if I already have an account. And I do have a, an account already. But if I want to register for an account, all I do is just choose a username. They encourage you to use your real name. You don't have to. Uh, just choose your, your account name, put in your email, verify it, and put in your password, and check I'm not a robot. What that allows you to do is a couple of things. And sorry, I don't know my password, so let me log back in here. This is just my password manager. And log into my account. Sorry. I logged out because I wanted to show you the login page, but there we go. OK. What that allows me to do is um, back up my library to cloud storage on the web. And it, it'll give you, I think it's 300 megs of free storage. The way I set this up, and I will give you instructions for this, so don't worry about remembering all of these steps. The way that you set this up is going to edit, preferences, and then sync. And I've got a website with instructions for how to do this. There will be a place here where you can type in your username and password that you just created. Mine, obviously, I've already got it set up. I don't want to mess this up by, by removing it. But there will be a place here where you can type in your username and password and then click OK. It's just like setting up Dropbox or something similar to that. And uh, you, you create the account on the website, and then you go to uh, the application to uh, uh, to actually connect the application to your account. And what happens is, here at the top right of my screen, there's this little green circular arrow. If I click it, it starts spinning, and it will synchronize, periodically synchronize my library. What that means is everything that I've saved here while we were saving sources today, everything that I've saved here will get uploaded to my cloud storage account. And if I log in on a different computer, like my home laptop, it will automatically download it to that computer. So it keeps everything in sync. Anything that I save to either one of my computers is automatically going to get uh, saved to my cloud storage and backed up online. Well, the other thing that this lets me do is uh, it lets me create what we call a group library or a shared library. And you can see I'm in several groups. Some of these are just, obviously, that's just a test group, a demo group that I made. Um, I create a library on the website where it says create a new group. I just give it a name and I choose whether I want it to be public, anybody can join, or private where somebody has to be invited. So if we are working on a group project together, if we're working on a class project or um, if we are writing an article together or anything like that, we can create one of these group libraries. And here's what it looks like in my Zotero library. It's down below my regular personal library, and you can see these groups that I've either joined or created. Yeah, this is, this is great. Um, anything that I uh, save to a group library, it's a separate storage space. 
Um, it does come out of my, my storage uh, quota. So again, I have 300 megs of free storage. I actually pay for a little bit more storage than that, but it's very inexpensive. Um, so it comes out of the group owner's storage space. But the only thing that takes up space is uh, PDFs or other attachments. I can have as many citations as I want. It's just PDFs and attachments that, uh, that take up space in my account. So you can see I'm a member or an owner of several group libraries. This is a totally separate storage space. So anything that I save here to a group library is not going to clutter up my personal library and vice versa. And I can make it private if it's just something that, that you and I are collaborating on a, uh, an article assignment together that we don't need to share with other people. We can make it totally private if we want to. Let me pause again for breath and coffee. And uh, that is most of what I want, wanted to show you. If there is anything else that uh, you would like me to go back over, uh, questions or problems or anything like that, I'm happy to take the rest of our time to do that. I've got the chat open so I can see any questions, anything that you want me to do again uh, to, while talking slower, I'm happy to do that. I did mention, just while I'm thinking of it, I mentioned that um, if you don't see the word toolbar, let me move some stuff off my screen. If you don't see this Zotero toolbar in Word, there is an easy fix for that. Just close Word. Let me close. I've got multiple Word windows open. Close Word entirely. And if you haven't installed Zotero yet, uh, it's easy to work around this. Just close Word before you install Zotero. But if I go into Edit, References, and then Cite, there's a Word Processors tab, and I can just click Reinstall Word Add-in, and it will just install it here. I can also get more styles. I can add or remove styles from my list here. Like I install, I don't know what this 2D material style was. I'm pretty sure that I just installed that to try it out or to demo it for somebody. I can remove a style just by clicking the, the minus button. And again, this is in the Zotero preferences under site. If I want to get more styles, like if I'm, I'm writing for a specific um, a journal that has its own style, there's a link here that says get additional styles and there are well over 10,000 styles now and I can search by the name of a style. Um, I can go into a specific subject area and just get math journals, for example, or anthropology styles. So there are many, many, many more styles. So if I go to anthropology, I'm the anthropology librarian and I want to install something, I can just click it and it automatically installs it to my list here. And if I want to remove it, there's a minus button. Okay. If there are no other questions, I will show you a couple places you can get help, including my email address. Somewhere, somewhere. Here we go. A couple places you can get help. Uh, this is my Zotero guide research.library.gsu.edu slash Zotero. I've got tutorials on here. I will post today's workshop recording probably later today. It will go here in place of that March 2022 workshop. Um, I've got some quick tutorials if you just want to see how to install it. I've got a walkthrough for how to install it here. I've got instructions for installation for saving citations for creating bibliographies things like that so i've got instructions for most of the stuff we talked about today probably everything we've talked about today as well as some other stuff on here so this is a great place to get help my email is also on that guide but i will give it to you now jpucket with two t's at gsu.edu please do feel free to drop me an email. I'm always happy to help with Zotero questions. If there is a, a troubleshooting thing, uh, like uh, Santana's question about the, uh, the connector not appearing, that sort of thing, uh, probably easier for me to help you over email. 
um, I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. Just let me know what browser you're using, what, you know, that sort of thing and, and what the problem is. I'm happy to help with that. If there are no other questions, yes, great, please do email me. If there are no other questions or problems or anything you want to see again, then we will adjourn. Thank you all so much. I'm really happy that uh, uh, a few of you came out today to see this. Um, and uh, drop me a note if there's anything else that I can help with. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to stop the recording.